Do you feel like you're qualified to serve in this Congress right now? How do you hope your constituents can trust you, even though that you've misrepresented your biography to them? What's your response to calls for a House ethics investigation by Nick Loda? Do you have any statements about your campaign and how you hope to govern? Do you hope to carry out your full term? What can you say to reassure your constituents that you'll do what you said you were going to do on the campaign trail given the concerns that have come up about statements you've made in the last few months? Do you have any statements to your constituents? Do you have any statements to your constituents? Are you going to are you copying your position? Are you copying your position, sir? You just watched freshman Republican Congressman George Santos, if that's even his real name, get grilled by reporters on his very first day as a member of Congress, although it's not yet official since there is no Speaker of the House yet. At the time that I record this video, it looks as if the vote is heading to a third round and Kevin McCarthy doesn't have the votes needed to secure the speakership at this point in time. And until that happens, nobody can be sworn in. So in other words, George Santos still has time to resign but it seems like he is remaining defiant. And if you hadn't heard, well, the reason why there's pressure for him to resign is because he deceived his constituents and lied about basically every single aspect of his life and career and education. And we'll get to that. But before we do, I want to share another video of him getting grilled and pay attention because towards the end of this clip, you're going to see how big the crowd of reporters who was following him around was, and they were relentless. They did not stop. Mr. Santos, do you intend to serve both years of your term? Do you plan to vote for Leader McCarthy today from the Speaker? Can you tell us if you plan to serve both years of your term, Mr. Santos? Will you answer any question besides, will you support Leader so McCarthy to be Speaker? You want to support him with McCarthy? Can you speak to any of the concerns about your biography, about what you've told folks about your background? Republican leadership told you anything, Mr. Santos? I absolutely love this so much. Now, there were so many reporters who were trying to talk to him that they were everywhere, including in his office. So journalist Scott McFarlane reports, per pool report, Embattled Representative-elect George Santos just approached his new office in Longworth House office building, where press and cameras have gathered, then turned around and went the other direction upon seeing press. And yes, I do have the video of that very moment. There was just nowhere to hide. Now, finally, the hounding from journalists relented when he ended up on the House floor. And even though he's a lying scumbag, you can't not feel a little bit bad just because he reminded me of the high school loner who sits at the lunch table by himself, hoping that somebody would come over and talk to him, but it never happened. So take a look at this video footage here. So as you can see, he's just sitting by himself, pretending to respond to text messages, I'm assuming, and nobody was paying attention to him. And because nobody was paying attention to him, he probably thought it was safe to literally dig his nose and roll a booger on his fingers. I'm, I'm not making this up. I know you think I'm making this up. I'm not making this up. Take a look. <laughs> My man literally dug his nose on his first day of Congress and rolled a booger on his fingers. So I know that you're disgusted, but we're going to go to an instant replay. You know this is happening. So first, he looks to make sure nobody's watching. And then very quickly, we have nostril penetration. But then he tries to play it off like he's scratching his nose, but 
He's got it. As you can see, he is rolling the booger on the tips of his fingers. Notice how the literal child next to him is behaving more maturely. I mean, I know it's early, but he is absolutely going to be the lol cow of the 118th Congress for sure. It was Marjorie Taylor Greene last time. This time it's George Santos, assuming he doesn't resign, but it doesn't seem like he is going to resign despite completely lying to his constituents about everything. So let me just give you a short overview of what happened with regard to the things that he said and how they're wrong. Washington Post reports he said he's part black. He said he's the grandson of Holocaust survivors. He claimed he helped develop carbon capture technology. He claimed to have worked at companies that never employed him. He claimed to be a graduate of two universities, only to admit that he has no college degree at all. His entire life story has been a lie. His educational experience, his careers that he says that he had, it's all been lies. He has even lied about the death of his own mother. So as you can see by this tweet here, in July of 2021, he claimed his mother died on 9-11, but in December of the same year, he wrote December 23rd, this year marks five years I lost my best friend and mentor. Mom, you will live forever in my heart. So if we do the math, so it seems like if your mom died in 2021, and that was the five-year anniversary of her death, then her actual death was in 2016, but yet you claimed she died on 9-11. Do you understand the problem here? Every single thing that he said thus far has basically been a lie. And remember at the beginning of this video when I said George Santos, if that's even his real name, I say that not to be facetious because he has literally gone by different names as well. I'm not making this up. Before George Santos, 34, made a name for himself in politics, he had insisted on being called Anthony, one of his middle names, and often used his mother's maiden name, DeVolder, eventually incorporating a company in Florida with that name. So he's lied about his career, his education, his mother's death, He's gone by different names. Who is this person? I mean, he just created a character to run for Congress and sold constituents on this person who doesn't actually exist. And because he's lied about everything else, there's even questions about whether or not he's lying about being gay, because this is the first Republican who's openly gay, or so we thought, maybe, to be elected to Congress. But there's questions about that as well, and for good reason. In October of last year, he told USA Today, I'm a gay married man, Santos said. I am openly gay, have never had an issue with my sexual identity in the past decade, and I can tell you and assure you, I will always be an advocate for LGBT. LGBTQ folks. Now, he said that in response to criticism he received for supporting Florida's don't say gay law, which is very hostile towards LGBTQ plus people. It is explicitly homophobic, but as an openly gay man, he supports it. But there's something in that quote that's even a little bit more bizarre. He said that he's never struggled with his sexuality, uh, sexual identity rather, in the past decade. But as the Daily Beast reports, he only divorced his wife in 2019 after claiming he's been proudly gay for the past decade. He never said he was bi. He said he's openly gay and he hasn't struggled with his sexual identity in the past decade. Now, look, sexuality is complicated, right? Maybe he remained married to his wife while they were just separated and he began to date men and identify as gay. Who knows? But I don't give people like this the benefit of the doubt when they've lied about everything. Although there is evidence that he has had boyfriends in the past. Why? Well, because they've spoken out and condemned his lies as well. So who knows if he's gay or bisexual, but here's what one of his boyfriends said about him. LGBTQ Nation reports Pedro Villarva said that while they lived together, he paid many bills for Santos. He suspects that Santos stole and pawned his phone for cash after finding online proof that Santos had faced legal charges in Brazil for forging checks belonging to his mother's client. Villarva packed all of his belongings into trash bags and moved out. Santos has since denied any wrongdoing, though Brazilian records show he admitted to the check forging at the time. So he committed fraud in Brazil, and his boyfriend in Brazil is saying, I'm pretty sure he pawned my phone for cash. I mean, what do you even say to this? There's a lot of liars in Congress. I mean, if you see a politician, whenever their mouth is open, it's safe to assume that they're lying. But this is next level. Like, this is level 99 
politician lies. It's just genuinely insane. And I'm sure that you won't be too surprised to learn that he's also already selling access to donors. And there's other ethical questions that he's raised since being elected to Congress. Politico reports for between $100 and $500, Santos said donors could get a bus trip to Washington, lunch, a swearing in ceremony, and a campaign led tour of the Capitol grounds. The invitation, first reported by CNN Thursday, launched a fresh round of questions about Santos' ethics. Santos is also drawing scrutiny for a series of questionable expenditures made by his campaign. The campaign spent $11,000 to rent a suburban house in Huntington, Long Island, claiming it was lodging for staff. The New York Times reported, but neighbors said Santos himself was seen living there. It's illegal for a candidate to spend campaign funds on their own personal expenses. So that's why this individual is being grilled by reporters in case you missed this story over holiday break, because he is a compulsive liar, but yet he had the nerve to claim that Joe Biden was a compulsive liar. But this individual has lied about everything. So is he actually going to get sworn in and not resign? Odds are, yeah, because he would have already resigned. So, I mean, it's it's funny that he believes he should not have this scrutiny. Like, you could see it in his face with that shitting and grin. He thinks that he should be able to just go to Congress and show up as if he didn't just deceive thousands of people into voting for him. Now, I don't know if they voted for him based on his qualifications and his life story, but either way, you lied to them. So you are incapable of representing them if you didn't even supply your constituents with an accurate picture of who you are as a person. But I mean, it's American politics, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's a member of Congress and in a month or two, nobody talks about this story because that's kind of what happens in D.C. A scandal comes up. And then Republicans just move on for it. So this is kind of the new Republican way. Trump set this new standard to where all you can do or all you have to do rather to get away from accountability with regard to scandals is just like let time pass and then you're fine. So we'll see if George Santos is able to hang on. But I'd guess that he will cling to power and hopefully be a one term congressman. Either way, he's going to be a lol cow for sure. And we're going to milk this lol cow for as long as he remains in Congress. Were you acting like a beta?